Hello everyone, in this video I will talk about architecture details of single phase energy meter. This topic is divided into two parts. Uh, the first part will cover the overall major blocks of energy meter and the factors which governs its architecture details. Okay, so let's start with this. Okay, so here these are the four major blocks which makes our energy meter. One is the hardware block, firmware block mechanical block and software part right this software part is along with it also consists of external uh, uh, equipments like cmri and bcs correct so let's first start from this now in order to understand in a simpler manner or in a practical manner let's take a uh, example of meter direct so here i have a meter uh, uh, in my hand okay so uh, let's uh, first uh, discuss about its uh, mechanical part uh, on the mechanical part it consists of is uh, the top cover and it's uh, this is called its base cover this is called its t cover it's called the terminal cover like this and under this terminal cover there is a one block block which uh, through which you connect the face wire and neutral wire and output wires and the size of block it depends on the type of meter whether it is a 5 to 30 amperes meters or 10 to 60 ampere meters. I mean these are the some major plastic parts which comes under your mechanical right and apart from this an external enclosure is also there to cover the meter. Let's talk about its hardware section. The hardware section majorly consists of a uh, one block is the power supply block. Power supply may be your capacity power supply or SMPS power supply. The second block uh, is your the current sensing elements. Current sensing elements may be your shunt, current transformer or your uh, Hall effect sensor. And the, uh, and the third block, in the third block the other uh, peripheral components comes in picture. For example, your LCD part, your optical uh, or the IR LEDs uh, and some switches are there. And apart from that, of course, your some microcontrollers and memory chips are there. So these are the major uh, components uh, which comes under the hardware. And uh, all these components uh, are selected very carefully according to your the tender specifications or the IS specification. In the firmware block, microcontroller measures all the signals and uh, drives all the electrical parameters like your uh, frequency, voltage, current, power factor, and apart from that, so finally, it calculates your cumulative energy, apparent energy, reactive energy, and so on. This is a one part, and also it uh, drives your the LCD part, and uh, then there are some memory components to log all the things. In the second part of this video, I will cover the architecture details of meter, which is focused towards the firmware part. Okay, guys, I have quickly discussed about the hardware part, mechanical part, and the firmware part. Now before coming to the software part, uh, let's uh, discuss the one more scenario. Uh, for example, say all these four parts makes your meter. Now the question is how this meter is going to communicate with the external agency or the um, meter reader or how your units or the whatever the energy is consumed uh, here pass it to your uh, electricity department. So here uh, your meter reader or the meter uh, supervisor guys monthly comes uh, with the CMRI equipment CMRI stands for common meter reader instrument and this instrument uh, talks to your meter uh, through optical port or through IR communication or through IRDA communication uh, right or maybe some through wired communication so here what I mean these are the physical channels to communicate uh, the CMRI equipment with the meter of course there is a software uh, which follows some kind of a particular protocol so that your CMRI equipment understands its language. Now this, per, uh, this particular protocol may be a standard one like a DLMS protocol or a IEC1107 protocol or this may be your uh, manufacturer specific protocol. So the meter reader captures all this reading through this instrument CMRI equipment and then goes back to the office. And in the electricity office it connects this CMRI equipment to the BCS. BCS stands for base computer software and here in the BCS it loads all the data into the BCS and this BCS software generates the file in a particular format and which is processed by the backend system to generate the billing to the individual customers. Okay, So this is a kind of a complete chain. 
complete chain i mean to say okay you have a meter then a cmri unit and the bcs unit and the backend software used to generate the bills so okay guys now have a some basic understanding about how your meter communicates from a starting point to your end point now let's talk about the software part this software part uh, I mean the uh, software inside the CMRI and the base computer software is also developed by the manufacturer companies because this software may have uh, some proprietary protocol or may have uh, some standard protocols like DLMS or IEC 117 to communicate with the meter. So that's why these are, are the four blocks which basically uh, defines the architecture of uh, your meter. Right. So now let's move to the next point. So guys till this point we understand these are the four blocks which is used to make the meter. Now the question is uh, what are the factors which governs the uh, specifications okay the hardware should be in a such a manner or you need to follow the particular kind of a specification to make the firmware or to uh, you know to give this kind of a features. So let's discuss about this. So the overall design of all these four blocks is driven by our state tenders. State tenders, I mean to say that there are a couple of names, BSES tender, PGVCL like a Gujarat and JVVNL, etc. For example, West Bengal, UP tender and etc. Here what I mean to say that every state floats are tender, okay, and uh, as per that tender, uh, your display parameters may be different, your mechanical casing may be different, your nameplate may be different, but the few things remains constant. Few things remain constant means that uh, uh, every tender says that you need to follow this particular specifications. IS stands for Indian Standard 13779. This is for class 1 and class 2 meters and generally applied to your single phase meters. And uh, there is one more uh, body named as CBIP and uh, in this report number 88 and 304 have some particular technical specifications and as per that uh, some features need to be implemented into the meter. So here overall with this overall picture the architecture details of meter is driven by the tender specifications along with this core specifications. Okay fine and in the single phase meter uh, these particular types are come one is the multifunctional single phase meter, LPRF meter, prepaid meter, smart meter or net meter etc. So all these specifications of course particularly follow this IS13779 standard. Uh, uh, which is defined for class 1 and class 2. Here class 1 means that uh, our uh, uh, single phase energy meters which is installed in our houses uh, follows the uh, 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 follows the class 1 uh, where its accuracy is between plus minus 1%. Okay. So in this video I tried to explain you the overall architecture of uh, single phase energy meter and the factors or the standards involved. Uh, which is used to drive the architecture of energy meter. In the next video, I will cover the in-depth details of its architecture, uh, which is oriented towards its hardware and the firmware. Okay. So I hope that the contents of this video is useful to you. And thank you very much for watching this video and have a nice day.